Is your Bernese Mountain Dog jumping up people and driving you absolutely mad? Is it making meeting new people or people coming over to your home an absolutely miserable experience? Well, don't worry, because that is exactly what I'm gonna help you with in today's video. Welcome back to the Fenrir Bernie's Mountain Dog Show. And if you are new here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder and CEO here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could ever dream of knowing about the incredible Bernie's Mountain Dog, then how to become a high level canine leader that can raise perfect Bernie's Mountain Dog companions. So if you love the Bernie's Mountain Dog just as much as we do here at Fenrir, make sure you start by hitting that subscribe button and turning on the notification bell. That way you'll never miss a future Bernie's Mountain dog video. Now, as a canine behaviorist that specializes in large, powerful guardian breeds, I have to help a lot of people, often working with quite severe, dangerous problem behaviors. Now, if you're talking about jumping up difficulties with smaller breeds, it's often not that dangerous. But when we're looking at a Bernese Mountain Dog, even if it's the most lovely, kind-hearted, sweet dog in the world, if they're displaying jumping up behaviors, it can be properly, really badly dangerous. And we need to get on top of that behavior as quickly as possible. So I want to help you in this video and I do believe that the best way of me being able to help you is we're going to cut away to a recent professional grade webinar that I produced that is specific to helping professionals be able to work with their clients on jumping up or high level canine leaders that want to really go deep into some of these behavior modifications and intervention programs and this one is dedicated to jumping up so I think there's going to be tons of information and value that you can take from this webinar to help you and your Bernese mountain dog so sit back and enjoy that webinar. So in this next quickfire webinar, we're going to be addressing one of the most common, probably the most common problem behavior that as a canine behaviorist, I come across in what I class as the category of more of a, a low level problem behavior, and that is jumping up. Now, depending on the breed that we're talking about, if it's a small dog, then it's an annoying, obnoxious behavior. If it's a large, powerful breed, then it can be incredibly dangerous. Either way, I truly believe that jumping up should be a non-negotiable, is not acceptable behavior and all dogs should be well-mannered, calm, patient dogs. So in this webinar, I'm going to talk about how I help my clients go through the process of being able to get a dog that is jumping up and is either obnoxious all the way through to downright dangerous to having them as calm, relaxed, patient, well-mannered dogs. Now, yes, there is a very clear behavior modification and intervention strategy that we are going to put into place to be able to very quickly, efficiently, and incredibly effectively deal with jumping up. It's probably the behavior with the most high success rate for pretty much anybody to be able to come in and implement this strategy to high levels of success. Now, if you follow Femrir at all and you've watched any of our other videos on YouTube or these webinars, you will know that it, I feel believe it is incredibly important and the vast majority of the work that we do isn't simply putting plasters on behavior problems we consider that the micro issue now as behaviorists we help people address those problems I'm going to help you with that in today's video but we focus on the macro issue and the macro issue behind all behavior problems is a lack of leadership on the owner's part so whether you're coming at this from potentially being interested in being a professional and you want to help your clients with behaviors like jumping up or you're watching this because you are struggling having your dog display some of these behaviors you must always start by readdress restructuring that relationship and addressing the issue of leadership the owner in that dog's life must become a high level canine leader that has the dog that will look up to them for guidance and direction if you can achieve that then you open up a communication pathway between you and your dog when you have that pathway wide open it is incredibly easy to teach them the things that you do want and it is incredibly easy to teach them the things that you don't want them to do and in this circumstance that is what we need to be able to so quickly and efficiently address the behavior of jumping up hey guys very quickly in case you didn't know we have our perfect puppy program it's the program that i designed myself as a canine behaviorist to help you guys become a high level canine leader yourself and then how to be able to take your puppy from the second you bring it home all the way through to that dream of the perfect canine companion that you've always wanted so if you want more information on that there'll be a link down in the description box below thousands of people have now gone through that process to extremely high levels of success so there's some testimonials you can go and check out more information it's all in the description box below but let's get back into the video you were just watching 
So here at Fenrir, to help people go through that process of restructuring that relationship, putting in rules, boundaries, and expectations for their dog, to be able to have them see the owner as the leader in the scenario, as we go through our one-month boot camp program that we designed. I've completely lost track of the amount of people that that has helped to achieve this to incredibly high levels of success. We have a version of it that we do in person with clients, and we also turned it into an online version so that anybody all around the world can do exactly the same thing and achieve exactly the same levels of extreme success and there'll be a link down in the description box below if you're interested by the way but that is about implementing rules boundaries and structure and expectation for the dog that allows them to flip that mentality to see the owner as the leader simultaneously it's about teaching the owner the theories concepts and principles to become a higher level canine leader themselves the combination of the two things gives us the desired outcome of a dog that sees them as an owner opens up that communication pathway and through that pathway then allows us to address these behavior difficulties and problems incredibly easily easily compared to simply facing going and attacking the micro problem and trying to put a plaster on it we address the macro problem and nine times out of ten the micro problem goes away on its own anyway and if it doesn't then we can come in and implement an incredibly easy strategy to address the problem and that's what we're going to talk about now in terms of a dog that's jumping up a lot so once we've restructured that relationship, it is then really easy to address a dog that's jumping up to the levels of like 100% success rate. It is a very straightforward process to be able to stop it happening. We need to correct the dog's negative behavior, which is jumping up. We then need to redirect them and show them what it is that we do want from them instead. And when they're displaying that desired behavior, we reinforce it. So if right now you've got a dog that jumps up all of the time, that's the undesirable behavior up here. And the desirable behavior is right down at rock bottom in terms of being calm waiting patiently with good manners we're going to correct this behavior which makes that happen less frequently and we're going to positively reinforce this desired outcome which will mean that that will happen more frequently we do the same both things at the same time and very quickly we get to a point where we're at the desired outcome all of the time and we don't need to use corrections anymore so in terms of what we do is we set up drills and we practice when we get a friend or family or you as the trainer if you're doing this in a professional setting you can go through the door the dog wants to come and welcome you i recommend utilizing a slip lead on the dog the second that that dog wants to jump up or is about to jump up we can't do it before because that's not fair we need to do it with perfect timing to let them know exactly what it is that we're correcting and that we don't want them to do we're going to use that slip lead with a very firm vocal inflection shoulders back chest up and we're going to use a verbal correction whilst pulling them down and we're not tug of war in them down it's just a quick pop alongside the verbal correction to let them know that is not acceptable stop doing that we never ignore problem behaviors good leaders don't ignore problems good leaders address problems head on fairly but efficiently and swiftly and then they move on straight away that's what we need to do with our dogs so the behavior happens the negative behavior i like to use an at, at but you can use a no a tss noise some people even like to put uh, pennies in a can uh, rings that you can jingle some kind of verbal auditory response to let the dog know stop doing what you're doing again i like to use an at, at so i'll use that as an example now so the dog's about to jump up i've got my lead and it's an at, at chest up vocal inflection ah no any version that you want to use let them know that right now bam that's not acceptable we don't do that anymore stop it and then we move on it's that quick a correction is on and off it is over as quick as it starts we don't sulk with our dogs we don't get into a tug of war we don't fight with them we just let them know swiftly fairly and quickly that is not acceptable brilliant then it's not fair on the dog to then not let them know what it is that we do want from them instead so when it comes to jumping up the best and most efficient way is the correct the, the undesirable behavior of jumping up we redirect to sit and stay we ask for a stay and then we reinforce that behavior so that stay could be one second so that process altogether might look as something as simple as dog goes to jump up ah, sit good boy yes good and then we stroke and we reinforce and we reward that behavior 
Very straightforward, very simple. Next time we drill it, we might go for a two second stay before we reinforce, then three seconds, then five seconds, then 10 seconds. And we build up that concept in the dog's mind of not only what I don't want you to do, but what I want from you in all six situations and scenarios is to sit, be patient, calm, and quiet. If you do that for me, then excellent things are gonna happen. Going through that boot camp process, we teach tons of different drills and ways that you can do that as well. In terms of at feeding time, we get our dogs to go into a nice sit, stay, and calm before they get access to food, before they get access to toys, before they get access to welcome them up onto the furniture. We drill into the dog this concept of, if you want something nice, I want to give it you. I love you more than you will ever know. And I want you to have a wonderful, happy life. And I want you to have everything you ever want, but, to get those things, all I ask, because I am in charge, I am the leader in this situation, is that you sit and you wait calmly, patiently, with good manners. If you do that for me, you can have anything that you've ever dreamed of. If you're obnoxious, you're annoying, you're barking, you jump up, then I'm going to tell you for that. I'm going to swiftly correct swiftly and fairly efficiently with 100 percent consistency so there's no confusion every single time i'm going to tell you that is not acceptable this is what i want you to do when you do that thing for me then good things are going to happen it isn't rocket science which is why you can have such high levels of success at kind of any level of leadership anybody can understand those concepts and theories implementing it is where it gets difficult because you can't be lazy you have to be disciplined you have to put in those rules boundaries and expectations and you have have to stick to them 100% of the time. If you do that, you will have a perfect dog. If you can help your clients do that, they will have a perfect dog. Theory isn't rocket science. Implementation of it takes a little bit of discipline. But if you're willing to put in that discipline, I guarantee you're going to have incredibly high levels of success. So there we go, guys. I hope there was a ton of value and information from that. I know if it was a little bit kind of complex or fancy terminology, that's understandable. Just go back and watch it a couple of times. You will be able to wrap your head around those processes. And I guarantee if you put in that work, if you commit yourself to those processes, you can have that dream Bernie's Mountain Dog that is well-mannered, calm, greets people beautifully that you've always dreamed of. So commit yourself to the task of becoming a consistent, calm, high-level canine leader, and you will thank yourself for the rest of you and your dog's life so if you enjoyed the video that like button is really appreciated if you hit that it helps us out here at Fenrir and if you want to see more Bernie's Mountain Dog videos that's what the subscribe button and notification bell is that way you'll never accidentally miss a future one of our videos because I can't wait to speak to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Bernie's Mountain Dog Show